Tem que falar. All right, now, quick fire this season, our host here at Topic. But we only have three minutes to discuss, so get those comments fast. Robbie Rock, let's do it. All right. September 30th marked the first Truth and Reconciliation Day in Canada. This national holiday was created to honor the survivors and the children who were lost in the residential school system. And to provide some context, in the past year, several mass graves with children numbering into the thousands have been discovered on the abandoned sites of these former schools. Um, so the holiday was item 90 of 94 propositions made to the Canadian government by the 2015 Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada Call to Arms. I wanted to get your thoughts on its significance and any similarities to U.S. holidays. So, round robin. Neo, yeah, let's start with you. <laughs> yeah, I think it's an amazing gesture. I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of what just happened with um, Juneteenth. You know, where we're finally making people aware of, you know, the, the last day of official day of slavery, the Juneteenth. So it was good to see. I mean, I'm glad that, um, you know, Canada's finally making some, um, uh, you know, some nods towards what they've done. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like, oh, sorry. Oh. No, go ahead, Gianni. Um, I, I was gonna say I feel like I feel like it's a step in the right it's a step in the right direction. Um, I think that the more people know and the more people are involved in it right now, then I feel like the greater the impact. So you you have somebody that's actually listening and listening to the current problems that the indigenous people are having in Canada. So yeah, shout outs to you guys. That's good. <laughs> good job. I'm glad. Hopefully it's um, it's a permanent thing, right? It's not just. Okay. It's it, this national is the first holiday. Time we're celebrating it, but it was declared a national holiday. So I guess it's going to be recurring. Sweet. Okay. This. Um, so in this country, we don't necessarily have anything similar, um, except for what Neo just talked about in terms of Juneteenth. However, what is happening now is that a lot of cities and states and schools and organizations, institutions are starting to remove the bullshit that is Columbus Day out of our lexicon, out of our, our annual celebration and turn that into Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, so we are slowly but surely starting to acknowledge um, our Indigenous friends and family here in the United States. We don't yet have anything like this that, you know, seeks to tell the truth seeks to give any reconciliation, but we're trying to get there. We're trying to get yeah. there. And there I are think groups of us trying more, to get there. Groups of us trying to get there. And I think with more education about what, who and what Columbus is, what he did, what he didn't do, I think that's where we're starting to see, okay, we need to shift gears here. We need to shift gears here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real quick, let me Slowly. give you a few, a few, a little bit, Robbie. What are those bullets? So, <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> So I was fortunate enough that my employer, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, put on a two-hour virtual event uh, that consisted of multiple speakers. Uh, it is available on YouTube under the Nossum TV channel. Check it out because it is very eye-opening. Um, Jose and I spent uh, the rest of the day just outdoors uh, and just being around the fire, it, just talking about, just reflecting about a lot of things that we've learned over the last year. So it starts with education. You're right. Okay. Are we yeah. calling this truth, lies, or shenanigans? Oh, it's... oh I got to get my... One second. <laughs> Finally, some truth. Finally, Finally some, some truth. truth. <laughs> Finally, some truth. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, on, online we have Jose says it's a step in the, direct, in the right direction. It's all about awareness and learning more about what happened. Um, Jacqueline Robbins says, hopefully you all aren't getting the pushback that we have in this country when it comes to acknowledging the more problematic issues in American history. Just real quick, I'm curious, are you? Uh, there might be some segments, but it's definitely not something that's getting a lot of media coverage. Uh, it's, the real story is the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and what it means to Canadians. We, we have to figure out those waters together. Awesome. Okay. Let's get into our quick fire number two. All right. So 
Ellen Pompeo is currently facing major backlash for uh, recounting a fight that she had with Denzel Washington, who was directing an episode of, an episode of Grey's Anatomy in 2015. She detailed some very rude comments she made, like, I yelled at him. I was like, he said, quote, I was like, look at me when, I apolo when you apologize to me. Look at me. And Denzel went ham on my ass. According to her, social media is saying this is white privilege. Is it white privilege or is this just two hot headed colleagues going after each other? So let me, so I'm going to start with Lizzie on this one. One, how do we know Denzel was hot headed? One person's account of what? Oh, that was me. We're having some internet issues with Lizzie. So we don't know who was really hot. You guys can't hear me? Yeah, we're losing we your can internet. You. Can you see me? It's, 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 it's coming out. out. It's coming back. You're all set. Go ahead. Okay. So my point was, we don't know what that Denzel was hot-headed. We don't know what he said about this. We don't. We haven't heard from anyone else who was on set. So to me, this is just one person's account, you know, trying to hype herself up as a bad mm -hmm. bitch. So I don't necessarily believe anything she has to say. And let me just point out very quickly, because Ellen is married to a black man and has biracial children, she has often felt that she has the right to speak on African-American issues, issues about the black community, and that she's one of us. Do we really think she went, to, mm. she went hard at Denzel like that? We really think so? Come on. I think she might have. But uh, I don't she might have. I don't believe it. Don't <laughs> Johnny, believe what do you think? It. Oh, good. I feel like I feel like she could have, but I feel like because I don't know, like you say, colleagues, I don't know that they have a relationship with each other in any way. So it's like if she did go go at there. Denzel like that, it's definitely some sort of privilege. And um, yeah, I don't know. But she also said that she went to talk to Denzel's wife. She was like, after that, after we got out of the argument, I went to talk to his wife because I was mad at him. And I'm like. What kind of, who says that? Like, what kind of privilege? <laughs> but, so, but she never uh, said- It sounds fabricated a little bit, but yeah. And Gianni, she never said, you know, what his wife, Pauletta, said to her. She just said she said right. to the wife. She never <laughs> said what the wife said to her. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Robbie, that would have been a different, yeah. Yeah, what killed me when I was reading this, her comments, you know, it's my show, it's my set, you don't even know where the bathroom is. <laughs> Check yourself, girl. Come on. You got to direct Come on. two. You have two two director credits for the show you were on for seventeen years. You have zero writer credits for this show. This is not your show. You're a principal actor who's got a credit on the show. Get over yourself, diva. It's it's not endearing to anyone, diva. And <laughs> no, I mean it, it is like this actress, diva. And I think that she's pumping herself. I don't think that she's that bad calling Denzel a motherfucker on set? Come on. To you know who face. you're talking to? Den this is Denzel motherfucking Washington. He might know something <laughs> about acting. He right, might know something. Yeah. Real quick, I'm out of time, but uh, I'm a little torn, so I kind of think these were two alpha personalities going at each other. And it probably happens all the time behind scenes in multiple places. And I don't think it's a bad thing for a woman to stand up for herself if she feels she needs to say something. But I don't... the problem for me is the public connotation and stereotype because had it come out that this was a black actor, say like Chandra Wilson on the show, yelling at a white director, say Ron Chandra Howard. Rimes. Chandra Rhimes. No, Chandra, Chandra Rimes. Wilson is one of the actors on the uh, show. Oh, you mean, what's her name? What was, what was her name? Bailey. <laughs> Bailey. Bailey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you know, she would have been labeled the angry black woman or she's a diva or, you know, as, as opposed to simply a woman standing up for herself. But, you know, I, you know, I don't know if that's Pompeo's fault, it's society's fault, but the point <coughs> is, I get it. I get the backlash. It's just, I don't know. I think they might have just been two people who were hot-headed. But also, too, she, he, she was overstepping her. Like, he's a director. He's giving her direction. That's what he's hired to do. So she was overstepping her boundary. So he was we can giving talk about another it more. actor. Yeah. He's basically her supervisor. He's another director director yeah. direction. Yeah. Yeah. So Jacqueline um, Robinson yeah, we, says, we yeah, we can talk about it in the after show. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Jacqueline Jack Rob says, gee, imagine yelling and cursing at the director for actually gasp doing his job. And Viola Davis had to <laughs> had the cheek to check her. Ellen left the room in tears. Typical, always weaponizing those tears. So mm. is this truth, lies, or shenanigans? I don't know. This I, is I swear, shenanigans. I swear I need to get I need to get a bullshit one. I need to get a bullshit. So Lizzie's one. got shenanigans. <laughs> Robbie's got shenanigans. Yanni's got shenanigans. All right. Yeah, All right. it is some shenanigans going on. All right, let's get to our third and final quick fire. That's going to be Gianni Storm. Okay. So Americans should start counting their resources. The economy is on the brink of crashing. Just this past week, on one of the most serious round of planning over America's debt, expert economists say both parties won't come to a conclusion in time before the stock market crashing and the government not being able to pay Social Security, food assistance, veteran aid. However, this week at nearly the last minute, as always, Congress and President Joe Biden averted a government shutdown by signing an infrastructure bill that funds, by signing a bill that funds the government through December 3rd. Um, Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, said that this is a temporary legisla legislation and would keep government services functioning. So my question to the panel is, despite the benefits of this bill, does this bill put a Band-Aid on the wounds of our impending economic crisis? Let's start with Liz on this. Ball rolling. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think. Um, I wouldn't even call it a band-aid, if you will. I think it just kind of puts a curtain over it. And, you know, we talked about this in pre-show, like this happens every year. This happens yeah. every year um, in the United States. I don't know how things go um, with this uh, bill and legis legislation and threats of a shutdown in Canada. But Rob, this happens every, at least once a year, mm -hmm. at least once a year. And in the past, we have had shutdowns. We have had government shutdowns, but normally for some reason, they can't work this shit out before the deadline. So everything goes to the 11th hour. So this is supposed to carry the government um, until December 3rd. Guarantee you we're gonna be back here on December 2nd. Guarantee, <laughs> happens every year, every year. And you know, Gianni, we, Neo and I, Neo, even though Neo's in Maryland, um, it's very close to DC. We have a lot of friends that work for the government. Happens every year. Every, every single year. year. Mm -hmm. Every single year. Robbie? It's, uh, yeah, so Liz, in Canada, we just passed laws to set up our tax and spending policies and issue debt to make up the difference. So we don't get into this bipartisan clash mm. that mm. hurts the American people in the long run. That right. they're, they're running their politics. This is party, this is party over people again. And it's, man, because the people who work for the feds are going to be impacted, but the people who receive these services are going to be heavily impacted as well because they're not going to have the adequate staffing and resourcing to properly implement these programs, Medicare and the likes of these types of social services. Now, I'm not personally sure when the last full fiscal budget was actually passed because I think I think it was passed. Maybe uh, I think last year's budget was fully passed, but this happens constantly where they're passing little stopgap measures to hold the, the government oh. over until they pass like a um, temporary budget. Or sometimes we get we get full budgets passed, but in a given year, I'm not sure when the last fiscal full year fiscal budget was passed. I'm not even positive on that. I have to look that up. But it's this is very common. I know we're not economists, but do you guys um, um, do you guys feel like the Biden economy and this isn't like opinions? Uh, well, it is opinions, but do you guys feel like the Biden economy is uh, going to be helpful, or do you feel like it's something that is like we're going to see uh, another recession? Let's save that question for the after show. So, okay. save that question. Good question. Good question. But let's um, let's get to the comments real quick. Uh, Olivia says they need to be figuring out this COVID disaster and how to keep people in their homes, supplemental pay, et cetera. Uh, Jacqueline Rob says, good question, Miss G. 
We go through this all the time. Unfortunately, it's clear that this political theater has been orchestrated by Mitch McConnell as the midterms mm -hmm. approach. Oh, oh, mm. calling yeah. somebody out. All right, all right. Truth, lies, shenanigans. All right. Calling truth, lies, shenanigans. Say it out loud. Truth, lies, or shenanigans. Sh shenanigans. I say shenanigans. Oh. Got lies and shenanigans. Okay, Neo lies. I see that. Why you and Lizzie have the opposite? One is truth and one is lie. Why? Yeah, I got. Uh, Why do you think it's a lie? Yeah, Mitch McConnell was telling all kind of lies. I think the situation is truthful because no, again, sure. it's yeah. nothing new. It, it, it's nothing new. Same old, same um, right? You know, I mean, born and raised Washingtonian. We, I've been through this a time. So we just hope <laughs> that it doesn't actually come to an actual shutdown. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we how many shutdowns were, in the last? I think we had one in twenty seventeen. I think we had a short one in twenty. Eighteen or nineteen. Twenty eighteen or nineteen. It was a short one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. where the government shut down briefly, and it's just all it is is posturing. People trying to get what they want. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. uh, okay. frustrating, but it is what it is. All right. All right. So 